Seeing her kneel in front of him without any clothes on made him think of some pretty indecent things and made him realize that he would need to have her put on some clothing. Though he wouldn't mind her walking around in the nude the entire time, Han figured that he should give her some kind of outfit for when they explore this world. Being the otaku that he was, Han thought it would be appropriate for him to create her a basic maid outfit, though the kind that's more on the revealing side. You'll put those on, he ordered her. Looking at him and then the clothes, she began to put them on, though with some initial difficulties. With her intelligence being so high, Helania was able to quickly figure out how to put on the outfit. After putting on the dress, the image she put out was definitely sexy. Feeling that something was missing, Han realized that she needed a sexy collar and made one materialize around her neck. You look beautiful, Helania. Han told her as he looked her up and down. Getting back onto her knee, Helania answered, My creator, I do not deserve such praise. Walking towards her, Han lifted up her chin to look at her face. He saw that she was blushing slightly and wondered what was causing this reaction. From now on, you will not refer to me as creator, but as master. I do not need others to know about my ability. Yes, my master, Helania responded, gazing up at him. Walking around her to look at the entire area on his floor, he thought out loud, I wonder what I should do about this place. Thinking about dungeons and games, he chuckled and thought, maybe I should have a maze set up in here. That would be an excellent idea, my master, Helania told him. She got back up and made sure to stand on his right side, slightly behind him to signify her position and status. Making a drawing table with drawing supplies on it appear in front of him to his right, Han ordered Helania, I want you to draw me an incredibly complex and difficult maze. Yes, my master, Helania said, and moved towards the table and sat down at the attached seat. She immediately began to draw out an intricate maze as Han watched over her shoulder. Make sure to identify suitable locations to place a variety of traps, he reminded her. After several minutes, Helania got up and moved to the side of the table so he could get a better view of her results. Looking at the paper, Han saw an incredibly detailed map of an expansive labyrinth. On the bottom of the paper, he saw a variety of traps written out with corresponding symbols that matched the ones listed throughout the maze. There were pits with spikes, arrows that shot out of the wall, ceilings that would lower and crush, spikes that would randomly appear on different parts of the labyrinth. Just seeing how complex it was, he didn't know if he would be able to complete it without being killed. Laughing at how great a job she did, Han placed his hand on her head and gently stroked her hair. I'm very glad I created you. You're already performing better than I expected, he congratulated her. Looking at him, Helania bowed her head, hiding the smile on her face. Going over to the entrance of the second level, he looked at the drawing again and as he saw each part of the image, he made it into reality. All throughout the floor, walls were being created, and in mere moments the entire floor turned into a giant trap for intruders. Walking over to one of the newly created walls, Han lightly tapped the material to make sure that it was adequately strengthened. Looking at the labyrinth, Han thought that there was something missing. Snapping his fingers, Han imagined the image of a beautiful woman with blonde hair and similar proportions of Helania though with more athletic body and with horns coming out of the side of her head and a tail coming out of her. Giving her a bikini looking outfit made from animal skins, he named her Minotauria and gave her similar stats as Helania, though without the magic abilities. She did have a high defense against magical and physical attacks. He could have given her magical abilities, but he felt that intruders should have a fighting chance. 
He smiled, thinking how intruders would react to a beast woman with such high stats. Seeing her eyes open, Han announced, I am your master. Your name is Minotoria, and your duty is to fulfill my will. This level shall be your domain, and you will prevent any intruders from leaving this floor. Minotoria went to her knee and said, I shall complete your orders with absolute obedience and devotion, my master. I only exist to fulfill your will. Han found it interesting how they treated him as a god, though considering how he created them from nothing, it was easy to see. The one thing he didn't need to worry about was for them to betray him, like all the other people in his life. Going over to Minotoria, he touched her shoulder and signaled her to rise. Sliding his hand down to her chest, he felt the soft and fulfilling feeling of her assets. He could feel her breathing quickening and continued to grope her. You are my beautiful Minotaur. I know that you will make me proud, he told her in a gentle voice. Removing his hand from her body, Han turned around and continued up the stairs to the third level. Han didn't even look to see if Holania was following him. The next level was similar to the floor beneath it. Thinking about it, Han decided to make this level a little different from the previous one. Imagine a sweltering humid jungle. Thick and ancient looking trees came sprouting from the floor. Wrapping each of the trees in thick vines, a person would barely see brown and instead see a jade colored forest. Smelling the jungle, he felt like he was entering into the Amazon. He pictured giant anacondas with potent toxin, monkeys that jump from tree to tree and would throw poisonous spores at intruders, leopards that would slink between the branches and ground, and giant poisonous spiders that would spin massive webs to trap those entering the jungle. Changing the ceiling to look like the sky and the floor to be covered in deep soil, the floor honestly looked like it belonged outside and would confuse those entering his stronghold. Signaling Helania, they moved to the foot of the stairs leading to the fourth floor. Like in the previous floor, he planned to create creatures that would guard his floor. This time, Han pictured two different women, both drastically different. The first female was a Lamia, with jade-colored hair and a serpent's tail. The tail was extremely long, like an anaconda's and would help her to attack intruders. This time, he didn't provide her with clothes and let her hair partially cover her mesmerizing breasts. Her name would be Anaculus, and her base stats were just as OP as all of his other creations. Her specialty was going to be stealth and help her to hide from intruders. He gave her a magnificent bow that didn't require any arrows and would shoot out paralyzing arrows. The second creation would be an Arachnia, so instead of a serpent's tail, the lower half would be a spider's body. Where the spider's head belonged, a beautiful woman's body emerged. He thought that it would fit her image to have shoulder-length hair and made it purple. Just like her sister, Anaculus, Horacia wouldn't be covering her beautiful chest. These sisters would be loving towards one another and help each other in protecting this jungle. They would indeed think of themselves as being siblings and work to protect one another. Both sisters were specialized in stealth, though Orasia was closer to being an assassin instead of Anaculus's ranger skills. Orasia being a spider was perfect for her ability and fighting styles, so he gave her daggers and short swords to help her assassinate intruders. While Anaculus would attack from a distance and help paralyze her opponents, Orasia would sneak up behind them and finish them off. Both of them were enough to eliminate any potential threats, but he liked giving them fighting styles. With the size of the floor, it would be very easy for intruders to get lost and become easy prey for any of the numerous creatures inside. Both of them opened their eyes and bowed before him, considering they were unable to kneel. Walking up to both of them, he felt their smooth skin, and bringing them close to him, Han gave each of them a passionate kiss. The sound of their moans could be heard as the two sisters felt carnal desire towards their master. After finishing his kiss, Han said, 
I look forward to seeing how you perform in the future, and hope you'll give your all for me. The two sisters bowed their heads in silence and said, "We shall complete all trials ahead of us, and give ourselves to our master, both body, heart, and soul." The heaving chest indicated that they were still aroused by his kiss, so they continued to keep their heads lowered and wait for their master to continue to the next floor.